A lot of times when I'm at the show, one of the questions that comes up is how to use a Maxine's mop or how to do a walkout blend with a mop. And so today I'm going to show you um, Maxine's mop, which is in the Low Cornell line in a variety of sizes. I have a one inch, a three quarter, a half inch, a three eighths, and a quarter. So depending on where you're going to use it in a small or large area, that's how you're going to select the brush that you're going to use. I'm actually, actually going to use the Maxine mop which is named after Maxine Thomas because she helped us design this brush. I'm actually going to use it on a small pumpkin today in a circular round fashion. I'm going to do this as a wet on wet blend. A lot of times when I have a circular section that I need to side load, if I just come in and I've got my dark value on this side and I lay that color down, I get a distinct line in there which doesn't really look like that pumpkin is helping itself round over. So by doing a wet on wet blend with a mop out, it makes it really a nice easy way for you to be able to get that technique without a lot of effort. So I'm going to leave a little bit of water in a flat brush and I'm just going to carry that over here. So you'll see that there's a nice little sheen to it. It's not soppy wet, it's just a little bit wet. I'm going to load my brush in a side load fashion, which means I'm going to wash out my brush, I'm going to pat it on my paper towel, I'm going to wipe off my ferrule so that I don't have a little water bubble in there, and I'm going to dress it in a side load. But because I talked for so long, I allowed that water to evaporate, so I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit more water back in there. So again, wash out, pat on your paper towel on both sides, wipe off your ferrule so you don't have a water bubble to come down and flood you later, and then I'm going to come in and put a little bit of a medium dark value on the corner of my brush and I'm going to blend it on my palette in the same section. So what I'm trying to do is redistribute that water and that paint by going back and forth into it. I don't move away from that blend because I don't want to leave that good blend on my palette. I want to reload it back into my brush. So now it's just a matter of laying that brush down and creating that angle of shade. So I have like a little ridge in there and I've walked a little of the color out, but I'm not going to sweep this back and forth. I'm actually just going to pat it in here and help me carry that color out just a little way. So you don't have to be a perfect side loader blender in order to use this technique because it takes care of it for you. I'm going to flip this upside down because I find that it's easier to keep my paint on my thumb side so that I know where it is every time. Again, I'm just going to wet that down first. I'm going to dress my brush in a side load fashion on my palette, and then I'm going to carry it over in here again. So if I want to carry that blend out a little bit further, I'm able to do that. And then again, I'm going to keep this brush completely dry. I'm not going to let it get really wet as I'm working with it and I'm gonna let that blend kind of work on its own. Now, I probably would wanna redefine that, deepen that, add some other colors to it. And I Okay, so now that it's a, a little bit drier, I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do the same technique again in a darker value. Now, as I go up the color scale, or darker into the color scale, my side loads don't need to be quite as wide. They will stay a little bit closer to the cuff in there. But again, I'm still gonna use my mop to keep that nice and soft so that it rounds that area out. Flip it upside down again. I'm gonna wet that section and then get my side load blended onto my brush. And come back into that. And pat that color out again so that I can get a little bit more definition in there. So now you can see that there are actually three distinct sections to that pumpkin. I need to add a little bit of highlight and I'm going to do it the same way. So I'm going to add a little bit of water to the, sec the center section of my pumpkin and I'm going to use sort of a lighter value orange, blending it again and carrying that color in. So this time I can actually bring that color away from that line just a little bit more with that sweep and then soften it by using the mop brush. And then I don't have that distinct line around those edges so it keeps everything really nice and soft. Each time I wait for that section to dry and I work in another section, so I'm actually going to come back, flip that over, and let's just go ahead and pick up this outer edge on this side here. The same technique, I'm using a wet on wet, 
I'm getting my side load in. I'm not being overly particular about the way that I lay that in because my mop actually helps me take care of that as I'm working it. Now sometimes you're going to have a side load that's going to come right down the center of your piece. And you can do a wet on wet flip float in that one section. But what ends up happening with a flip float, and I'm just going to do one on the outer portion of my pumpkin, is I'll take it, I pretend that I've wet this area first. Then I'm going to take and I'm going to put a side load in and I'm going to flip over and I'm going to put a back to back side load in. And then I come back and forth and play with that line so that I get that walkout blend. Well, I can take and I can actually soften it with this so that it gives me that real soft demarcation of color back and forth when I'm working on it. An easier way to do that is sort of a technique I came up with for my students is I dressed my brush in a regular side load fashion by patting it on one side, patting on the other side, wiping off the ferrule. And you'll see I have a little bit of a sheen to my brush so that I do know that I have some water and moisture in there. I'm just going to take a round brush with the color that I want on the tip of my brush and I'm going to pop it into the center. Now if you know me, you know that I always am looking for the easiest way to do whatever it is. I don't like to suffer for my art. So I came up with this technique to make it an easier way for you to do a flip float. I'm just going to lay my brush down and I'm going to lift it back up. I need to touch it on my paper towel. I'm a little soupier than I want it to be. And now I'm just going to carry it down the center and I get that dark to light value of color already all in one stroke. So when I go to use this on the pumpkin, I'm going to put it down the face of my pumpkin. I'm going to wet it first. Again, I'm just going to put a little bit of color into the center of my brush. I'm going to work it, staying right on that line each time, not moving away from that line, so that I can put that paint and that water back into my brush. And I'm going to come right down the center of my pumpkin. And then I'm going to soften it out with my mop brush. So now I have that shine that I've been trying to get without having to use a whole lot of effort in that as well. One of the other things that ends up happening on a round surface is that you have maybe a light source or something that comes down and it will give you maybe just like a little bit of color over here that needs to be walked out. I like to use this brush to do that one as well. I'm just going to wet this area. Now what ends up happening in a lot of those cases is I get my water down, I get my color loaded in my brush, and then as I try to work that color out so that it's going to be really nice and intense in the center and a little bit lighter on the outside, I end up getting sort of a little star like that. But if I take and I just pat with my brush, it's going to keep it a little bit softer. It's difficult to see on here, but I'll show you over here. I'm still a little bit wet where I laid that down. And I'm going to come in and I'm just going to walk that color around. I don't have to work really hard with that. I'm just going to pop a little bit of color in. And then as I take my brush and I soften that out, I get a little bit of a sparkle. Now it's very difficult to get that all at one time, almost like the walkout blend that's in the center there. So you'll need to come back with a higher value or a brighter value in there. And I'm actually going to put this on my outer side so you can see the change in color in there. We'll walk that out. If I was going to do that traditional walkout blend in the center, I would wet that area first rather than that one little load that I did down the center. And this is just to show you a couple of different ways to do this. I'm still a little bit wet. I'm going to wet that area. I'm going to load with that lighter value yellow. And again, I keep that a little tighter to the center as I lay my color down. And what ends up happening is that stripe is difficult to get rid of, so you have to work that color back and forth. But by coming back in now with my mod brush, I can keep that really soft and subtle in there. I have this little section wet here again, so I'm going to tap a little bit of my brighter yellow in there. And you can start to see that shine starting to come out on its own. So you would actually bring several layers of color on the top of that in order to bring that up. 
So if you're having difficulty with your side loads, if you have a large piece and you're shading all the way around the edges of it and you want that color walked out and walked away just a little, then be sure that you just wet your area first and apply your side load and then tap in with the mop brush to keep everything nice and soft and everyone's going to think that you're a side loading expert too. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed my little video about Maxine's mop.